Hey everyone, RC Red Baron here. Today we're bringing you a build video of the Banana Hobby SU-47 Twin 70mm EDF Jet. This plane features retract systems with doors to cover the retracts. We have working canards, elevators, ailerons, rudder system, and even a landing parachute slowdown system. Let me go ahead and get this thing out of the box. We'll show you what, what it comes with, then we'll get started. Stay tuned. Okay, so we have the plane laid out. I've kind of laid out all the parts just so we can see what all we've got. Now, the, one of the things that we'll notice is the power system. Um, I went ahead and I removed the shielding that was on this because I needed to figure out exactly how I wanted to mount this. All of my LiPo batteries are Dean connectors, and this system here is a very large bullet system uh, for some of the newer battery systems that I've seen come out. But since I use my six cell batteries for other aircraft, I want to maintain my Dean system, so I'm going to go ahead and be unsoldering these and reconnecting them. Now this does come with a separate BEC system, so here's your uh, battery for your uh, power to your uh, receiver and that's going to need to be soldered back in here too or I can always just power my receiver with a flight battery and remove this complete system here okay so we've gone ahead and attached the front section to the main fuselage got that glued in and before I attached it make sure you decide on what you're going to do with the power system I went ahead and soldered on a Dean's connector making sure that I connected the uh, BEC to the system so that way I can have power to my servos so make sure you do that before you attach the front this gives you a lot more room to work with the wiring system okay I just wanted to point out a couple of quick connections here because I know a lot of people are going to be asking <clears throat> where does everything get connected uh, like I said all the wires are labeled so most of it's straightforward label throttle to throttle your elevator to elevator aileron to aileron but where it gets a little tricky is what to do with some of these other cables that go into, um, for instance, gear. The gear is going to be labeled um, bomb door. Okay, so that's that's actually your gear, and you need to connect that to your gear channel. Your rudder is labeled direction, so plug the direction cable into your rudder. And then for the last two, this one here is my light cable. It's actually just a red and black and that one I've got plugged into my aux one um, now remember with the light there is no way when you plug it in to turn the light on and off the lights simply going to be on because it's drawing power from this channel so what I've done is on the aux two channel I've attached where it says retracts uh, the retract switch is actually not retract uh, what they're indicating is the retract for your parachute so if you don't want to connect your parachute, you don't plug this in. But I've got it connected to AUX2, so when I hit my AUX2 switch, I can eject out the parachute. So that's just one of the things just to pay special attention to is the way they do have it labeled. Again, bomb door is, your, is actually the retract system. Um, and the one that's labeled retracts is actually your parachute extension. Okay, the next step that I'm going to take is go ahead and get the wings attached. One of the things I really like about this, this jet is the way the wings do attach in the, in the uh, fuselage. It's got a nice groove for attaching in here, plus they also have lineup um, shafts here and here. So that's going to make the lining up and getting the wings attached very, very simple. If you're installing your wings, the kit comes with these small plastic bars. They actually fit inside these grooves between the fuselage and the wing. So make sure you glue these in as well. They'll help keep the, the wing a lot tighter and stronger attached to the fuselage. So we're going to go ahead and get those glued up as well. Okay, for the next step, attaching your canard, there's going to be a small screw that you need to tighten down. Not too tight. This screw simply keeps the canard from sliding in and out of the rod coming out of the fuselage. Once you do that, there is a medium length uh, servo rod here that we just connect to the servo arm and bring it out and attach it to there. Trying to get your canard as level as possible. Okay, so we're ready to install the elevator onto the back of the plane using our three hinges. 
I have already gone ahead and gone to the center point and, in, and put in a hole for each of the uh, hinges. So I'm going to do a dry fit now that the glue is nice and dry. Just to make sure that all the holes are lined up, I won't have any problem. Because this has to be on one smooth maneuver. So I'm just making sure that I've got no issues now that they're all installed and I can get these installed quickly and smoothly. And you can see right there that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out, get the glue, on a little bit of glue on each one. I know what I need to do. Okay, I'm now ready to attach the elevator to the servo. You see here I've chosen the medium length control arm. I'm attaching it to the servo arm to the hole above the arm that goes to my thrust vectoring. It fits nice and tight right in there, nice and easy. And I'm simply going to be attaching it to the bottom of my control horn here. The important part is to get this lined up level and then use this, make sure it lines up nice and smooth and I can shorten it or lengthen it so that this is, remains level with the plane. What you can do, you notice this mark here down the center of the fuselage, I'm going to line up the tip line up the tip here with the center mark and that's where I want this to be just right. Okay, one of the things I decided to do on the second rudder is because I noticed the uh, servo arm was having a little, the rod was actually having a little problem going into the servo arm so I wanted to go ahead and get that connected before I installed it there. I also went ahead and ran the wire from the servo into the plane to try to help once I get it installed it's not quite as difficult. Now since I don't have power to the servo it's possible it could move but I did have it powered up before so hopefully it's still in its exact center. I'm going to go ahead and attach the servo where I believe it needs to be and if I need to make any small adjustments I can always do that after it's installed and I produce power back to it.